Hello everyone. What we're going to talk about in this lecture is how to build small moves on the Rubik's Cube. So what do I mean by small moves? Well, I mean move sequences. So the, the basic moves, you know, you twist a face, uh, either clockwise or counterclockwise. You twist multiple faces in sequence. That would be a move sequence. I'd like to come up with a move sequence that moves only a few pieces as an end result. So maybe I want to move three corner pieces around in a cycle, or some edge pieces, or maybe flip some edge pieces over because the stickers are on the wrong sides. Those are small move sequences, move sequences that affect only a few pieces on the puzzle. Now, if you've ever played around with the Rubik's Cube, then undoubtedly you get to a state where, you know, maybe the two top layers are all solved and then you end up with the bottom layer just left to do. And this is the point you want those small move sequences. I want to come up with moves that only move a few pieces at a time, but eventually leave these first two layers that I've solved untouched. They may move around temporarily, but they eventually come back to where they started from. Now that's one of the reasons why you'd like to have small move sequences, because then you could solve this. Another reason that you'd like to have a set of small move sequences is perhaps for theoretical reasons. Maybe then, if you know some of the basic things you can do on this puzzle, you can answer big questions like, how many possible configurations are there of these pieces? What is impossible to do versus what's possible to do? You know, are there certain states of the pieces on the puzzle that you just can't twist the puzzle into? Maybe the only way to get there is by disassembling it and reassembling it? So those are more theoretical questions. And this is another reason why you want these basic move sequences. So the four basic moves we're going to look at today are the corner three cycle. So that is pick any three corners and move them around in a cycle. The second one we're going to look at is corner twists or double corner twists. We're going to pick any two corner pieces and twist them in place. We're going to do the same thing for the edge pieces. Now an edge piece is just the piece that's caught between two corner pieces. It's the one that has actually two sides on it, two stickers on it. So for those edge pieces, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to look at edge three cycles. How can we pick any three edges and just cycle the three edges amongst themselves? And lastly, we'll look at edge flips, how to pick any two edges and flip the edge pieces in place. So those are the four basic moves. So let's get to it. The first move I want to demonstrate is a corner three cycle. So we're going to pick three corners. I'm going to pick these two in the top front, and I'll pick this one as well for the third one, the back right bottom one. And I'm going to send this one here, this one here, and this one up here. So I'm going to cycle them in this direction. So here's the move sequence. If I bring back corner down by doing what's called a left move, because I'm turning the left face in the clockwise direction, so that's called a left move. Well, denote, I'll, uh, in the notation that's just written below here, uh, L denotes a left move, whereas L inverse denotes the movement of the left face in the counterclockwise direction. And similarly for the up face, the right face, the front, the back, and the down face. So you'll see some symbols appear on the bottom of the screen indicating the move sequence that I'm doing. Um, the letters just refer to which face I'm twisting and whether it's the letter with an inverse or without an inverse. The letter with an inverse means it's in the counterclockwise direction. The letter without the little inverse sign, the negative one, means it's in the clockwise direction if you're looking at the face. Okay, so here's the move sequence. We'll go uh, left, down squared, so twist of down face 180 degrees, left inverse. Now I'll move the up face, and then I'll undo the sequence of moves I just did. And now if we look at it, we see that the three corners that were affected were exactly the ones I want to affect, and they moved in a cycle. If we do that again, then we've just advanced them once more. So what was the blue, white, red face, uh, corner QB, went started here, moved to there, and then in the second time I applied the move sequence, it went from here to here. So if I do it one more time,
everything's now back where it started from. So that's the basic three-corner cycle. Now you may say, okay, well, but your three-corner cycle only affects these three pieces. What if I wanted to affect, say, this one, this one, and maybe this one? Well, then you could take that piece. You know how to affect these three. You could take this corner piece and just move it there temporarily. Now if you three-cycle these ones, and then undo the move that brought that corner piece you wanted to bring into that three cycle down here, undo that. You've now got a three cycle that affected those three pieces. And doing sequences like that where you move the pieces you want to affect into these three positions uh, means that you can really affect any three pieces you want. Just take the three pieces you want to affect, temporarily put them into these three positions, do the three cycle, and then undo the move that brought them into those three positions to begin with. So we can now achieve any three cycle we want. How about corner twisting? So the second move I want to show you is how to twist two corner pieces. And I'm going to pick these two in the front again. I'm going to twist one of them in one direction and one of them in the other direction. So let's just demonstrate the move first. So at this stage, I've managed to twist one in the clockwise direction. I still have to twist the other one. So what I do is I just take that other one, move it into the spot occupied by the first one, and then undo the sequence of moves that I used to twist that one in the first place. And it ultimately ends up twisting it in the opposite direction because I'm undoing the move sequence. And then I undo the move that brought it there in the first place. And there we go. I've got a sequence of moves that now managed to twist that one clockwise and then this one counterclockwise. If we did it again, it would advance this one more in the clockwise direction and this one more in the counterclockwise direction. So I'll just demonstrate it a couple more times just so you see the move sequence. So I take this corner piece and what I am ultimately doing is hiding it in the back temporarily. So I bring it down, hide it in the back temporarily, bring that face up. Now bring the front face down to pick this one up again, the one that's in the back. I'm going to pick it up using the front face. So I bring it back now, bring it up, and now it twisted it again one more in, once more in the clockwise direction. And then I undo the move sequence. I use the front face to hide that corner temporarily, and then I use the left face to come and pick it up again and send it back. So now I've twisted them again, once more in the clockwise and counterclockwise directions. If I do that one more time, it should restore everything on the queue. So let's do it again one more time. And there we go. So we've got a move sequence that allows us to twist two corner pieces in opposite directions. We can now adapt that move sequence to do any two corner pieces we want. If I wanted to do, well, these two corner pieces, then I just rotate the cube like that and now work on it in the same way. If I wanted to do opposite corner pieces, well, I could just bring it forward. So now the corner piece that I want to affect is now here. Now apply the corner twisting move that I just developed and twist these two and then undo the move sequence uh, that brought this piece into that location. So maybe I'll just demonstrate it. Okay, now we'll twist the two corner pieces. And so now I've twisted those two corner pieces and now I undo the move that brought this one into that spot to do the twisting in the first place. And now I've managed to twist the opposite corner pieces. So I can now start adapting the double corner twist for any two corners that I want to affect. The third basic move I want to demonstrate is an edge three cycle. So I'm going to pick these two edges, the two in the top, one in the front, one in the back, and the other one in the front but now in the bottom. So these three here, that one, that one, and that one. And I'm going to come up with a move that sends this one down here to the top back the one in the top back to the top front, and the one in the top front to the bottom front. And here's the sequence of moves to do that. Move the middle slice layer up, 
spin the top layer 180 degrees, drop the middle slice layer down, spin the top layer 180 degrees. And now we end up with the edge 3 cycle. We can do it again, and that'll advance everything once more. Uh, and then I can do it a third time and restore everything. So middle slice up, middle slice down. And that advanced everything once more. Again, middle slice up, and then middle slice, and then up squared again. And that's restored everything. So I can affect three edge pieces that all live on the same slice. How could I do any three edge pieces? Well, again, a little bit of a hint. Suppose I wanted to affect this edge piece and this edge piece and this one as well. So three cycle these ones. Uh, maybe in this direction. You can pick which either direction you want to go in. So what I'll do is I'll take that edge piece and I will bring it down here. Once it's down there, now I can rotate these three. I can do that, that three cycle on them and then when I undo the setup move, it will have ultimately then cycled these three around. So try that one for yourself. And uh, lastly, I want to just demonstrate a uh, double edge flip. So I'm going to pick two edges. Maybe I'll do the front one and the back one. So these two edges. And I'm going to, well, actually, maybe I'll do the front one and the, the one on the right. Um, so these ones that are side by side. And here's how we flip those. I'm going to do much like I did with the corner cycle. I'm going to try to flip one thing, one of them first while leaving everything else in the up layer fixed. So bring it down. I'm going to hide it off to the side. Middle layer up. I'm going to take that thing and slide it underneath, middle layer down. Now it's way in the back, so I'll spin it around out to the front, middle layer up. And now it's flipped. If I undo that sequence of moves, it would undo that and restore the bottom. So instead I'm going to twist the other one I want to affect into place and now undo the sequence of moves. So here it's important to remember what the sequence of moves and was and then uh, your ability to do it in reverse. But there's our ultimate goal. We've managed to flip two edge pieces. So again, it's middle layer, bring the edge piece down, hide it on the side, restore those two pieces by moving the middle layer up again. Take the piece that you still want to flip, move it underneath the place you want it to go, use the middle layer down, that's now sent it to the back, bring it all the way around to the front, and now slide it back into place. That one's now been flipped. I now slide this one into place and reverse the move sequence that flipped that one. So let's bring it down. This is the send it all the way around to the back. Bring it up. Now it's out in front. So now I temporarily hide it on the side. Bring the middle slice down. Slide it into place. Bring the middle layer up. And then restore the top layer. So now we've got a double edge flip. So those are our four basic moves. Three cycles on the corners, uh, double corner twists, three cycles on the edge pieces, and a double uh, edge flip. The corner, the three cycles on the corners and edges, those are called uh, permutation moves because you're just moving the pieces around. The twisting and the flipping of corners and edges are called orientation moves. Because the piece is in the proper spot, you're just trying to orient it so it's in the, in the right orientation for the position that it currently occupies. Now that we have those four basic move sequences, we can solve the Rubik's Cube from any configuration. Typically, you wouldn't apply those, those move sequences, though, right from the very start. You would probably just try to fiddle around with the cube and see if you could get the top layer done. If you can get the top layer done, great. Maybe getting the middle layer solved. Um, you might want to apply a, a couple of those basic move sequences or maybe just by fiddling around you're able to get the first two layers solved. Excellent. The last layer, this is where the trouble starts because now you've got these two layers already solved but now you need to figure out what to do with the top layer. And you need sequences that move only a few pieces at a time and those are those four basic move sequences. So now you can have some fun uh, solving the cube. But even more, those four basic move sequences allow us to start answering theoretical questions about the cube. Uh, how many configurations are there? What's impossible or what's possible to do on the cube? And those are topics that I want to address in, in future lectures. So thanks very much for watching and we'll see you again next time.